Welcome back, this is MVRs. Today a new video in the series of Iron Scott. This is gonna be the last one and we're gonna see how I animate Iron Scott. In this video I would like to show you the whole process but of course that would take a long time to record. Instead I'm just gonna show how I work and I'm gonna share with you my workflow. The first step when I'm going to animate a character is I'm gonna shoot some reference. This can be me jumping around or acting out a scene, having some dialogue, or maybe I can be dancing, I don't know. After you shot your reference, you can, and you don't have to be afraid of this, edit your reference. I go over to Premiere and I edit my references all the time. I choose different parts from different clips and I edit them together just to get the best of both. I even went as far as animating in the rough effects uh, in Animate CC, that is from Creative Cloud Adobe, and I went in and animated a sort of air bracket that's pushing a Scott, Iron Scott back and then he falls over. Let's start by analyzing our reference. You have multiple options here. Uh, for example, in Blender, you can use the grease pencil. If you use images as plain, you can import your video reference and then use the grease pencil to outline your key poses. Of course, you can use different software as well, like Keyframe Pro or SingSketch.com, that's a free one. I like to start, and for this one, I'm gonna use SingSketch. I like to start with importing my footage there. Let's start by identifying our extreme poses or key poses. That could be like contact poses or extreme changes in our silhouette. And of course, you don't have to stick to your reference exactly. You can push your poses, tweak the poses uh, and see where you can exaggerate it. Right now I have outlined the first frame and I'm gonna look for the next contact pose. So I think around six could be the contact pose. It's kind of hard to see because the mat where I'm landing on is black and my socks and, and everything is black as well. So it's kind of difficult to see. And maybe even my left foot got earlier to the ground than my right foot. And that's something to keep in mind as well because you're not only looking for extreme poses, but you're also looking for extreme poses for individual body parts like in this case my left leg for example. Right here this is an opportunity to build in some extra detail. Uh, you can see that I am readjusting my hand and finding my balance. That is something you should really highlight in your blocking as well. So I would say include this change and the adjusting of the hand as well as a different pose. All right, I would do this for the whole reference as well, but for this tutorial, I would show you what the next part is gonna be. And in the next part, I am gonna add in some breakdowns or in-betweens. So I'm gonna choose a different color. And for example, I'm gonna choose orange. It's a nice complementary color for blue, so why not? Then I would go back in and see where I can find a breaking point or a passing point. I noticed one already and I'm gonna show you. From six to 11, there's a big change and I would say around. So around nine, I would say there's a passing point, but you can see that the body is still coming down from that standing up pose. And from 25 to uh, 40, you can see that first the body is coming down and after that the hat is coming up. Uh, that is what we call an anticipation. So around 28 is the point where the body is gonna drop to its lowest point before the hat starts to come up. And I like to mark that as well. So right now you and me can just go ahead and add in some breakdowns, add in some more in-betweens. Uh, and this is just to prevent that our animations become floaty. And after that we can head into Blender. So see you on the other side. Right, over in Blender, we're gonna see how we can animate Iron Scott. First of all, I need to show you how you can set a keyframe. So let's make it easy and create a new cube. Drag it somewhere in the scene. And say we wanna animate this cube from this location to around there. Now what I can do is I can go into the end menu on the right side here, and there's location, rotation, and scale. These are all values you can set a keyframe for. The way you do that in Blender is hover over the value you want to set a keyframe for and press I. In this case it sets a keyframe for the whole channel, uh, that is the location channel, so it's X, Y and Z. If you for some reason just want one channel, you can also do that, I just Ctrl Z and say right click and say insert single keyframe, that inserts a single keyframe for the X uh, value. Right, Ctrl Z again. So right click and insert keyframe for the whole location channel. So now what we're gonna do is we can open up a different window and that is the dope sheet editor. Uh, you can do that by hitting shift F12. So as you can see, we set a keyframe on frame one. There you go, X, Y, and Z. 
if I go forward in time, say 30 frames, and you can do that by holding shift and pressing the arrow up and down, that makes you jump 10 frames. And if you press left or right arrow, you jump one frame at a time. Holding shift and left arrow brings you back to the start and shift and right arrow brings you all the way to the end of your um, timeline. Jumping forward like 30 frames. I'm gonna say shift S, selection to cursor. It can be anything you want. I'm gonna hover over this value right here and press I. Now we have set two keyframes and our animation is created. Awesome. Now we have our animation in place, moving from A to B. And if you would like, you can animate something in between as well. As you can see, this rig has a lot of controls and you don't want to go into every single control and set keyframes for location, rotation and scale. You can just select all, say Y, and this brings up a menu and you can say lock rod, for example, that is location and rotation. So this adds a keyframe for the location and rotation. Let's do that. Go forward in time and we can move up the arm, for example, something like that and say I, and you got this pop-up menu and you can say lock rod, or you can even say keyframe, all available keyframes. I'm gonna select all and get rid of all the animation. Reset the rig. And we're gonna work in our first pose. I'm sorry, I have to go into the text editor and say rig, maybe it's this one. And this brought back my rig layers and that's what I wanted. Shift 12, shift F12, sorry. And now we can see what layers I would like to work with. So I want the torso layer. I want the finger layers. I want to work with FK arms. I don't need the tweak for the arms just yet. The leg IK is fine and I don't need the leg tweaks for now. So don't need the root. So these are the controls I wanna work with. And the first pose I wanna create is the landing pose. That's the key pose I got. So I landed on the right knee, supported it with the right fist, looked up into the camera. So I'm gonna bring back my, I'm gonna bring back the leg here. I'm gonna grab the hip or the body controller and bring it all the way down. Uh, I have to switch from FK to IK, so I select the hand controller. There you go, rig main properties. Yeah, and say IK, FK, hand. So this is now controlled by FK. <laughs> and do that for the other one as well. So select the hand and with this slider, you can say IK or FK. Right now, I'm just gonna work in the pose real quickly. I have to rotate this up a bit more, bring it down as well. I can maybe bring it out. This is a bit of cheating, but it's all fine. It's all good. I wanna bring out this leg as well. This pose isn't really gonna work the way I thought it was gonna be because the proportions are a bit off in comparison with a really realistic humanoid. Quickly gonna make a ground plane so I can see how my how the character is resting on the floor. So yeah, let's pretend I'm happy with this pose. I'm gonna select all, press I and say lock rod for everything. I can delete this keyframe because I don't know how it got there, but it's not really what we want, of course. So my workflow would be block in all the extreme poses, then fill them in with the breakdowns and passing points, and then add some more in-betweens to convey the weighting, have proper ease and outs, and then track the arcs, of course. That's just a lot of things to show, but I think it's too much for a beginner tutorial. And I think this is a nice start. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, leave a comment. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you want to see more content in the future, subscribe to the channel. As always, keep creative, stay safe, ciao.